The primary goals of the summer prep course is to, if a student has not had any experience with the SAT before, then they're going to have had it by the end of the course. If a student tries to take the SAT without any prep, their score is going to be lower than it could be. The students can study well on their own, but with this course, we should be able to remove and address logic problems that students have when dealing with multiple choice and, uh, and familiarize them with each of the individual kinds of passages and the types of questions that can arise and so that they can develop, they will learn strategies so that they can tackle absolutely everything that's present on the test. And not only that, but students will be able to develop confidence and certainty about the choices that they're making, which improves their speed and accuracy and score as a result. So the class is a total of eight 90-minute classes, and the target is for students who already have a good amount of experience with the test. But if a student doesn't have a lot of experience, it can still work too. It's just it's, the target is going to be students who are already scoring fairly high, 650, 700 already on their verbal section. And in each class, we will, after the first class, the first class will be about strategy. And we'll talk about how to answer multiple choice questions correctly and logically without falling into traps that students often fall into. And uh, then every class will be a discussion of the test that they'll have done. We'll go over a reading section and a writing section in every class, and we'll be addressing students' problems and mistakes that they made while they were doing their homework. It's a simple format, but it's an effective format. It's the format that I found works absolutely the best for what students are going to be. What it, it allows a spot check for students to solve individual problems. Um, and helping and listening to other students and what their issues have been on different questions is useful for students because they often don't realize that they actually did have a problem with a particular question. Even though they got it right, hearing another student who got it wrong causes them to reconsider their own mistakes, uh, their own processes. And so uh, working together in a workshop environment is extremely effective. For each class, Students will be tasked with completing a reading section and a writing section between each class. They should have it completed before class, so and it should be timed, which means that they're going to have to do the 35-minute writing section and the 65-minute reading section, which, if you do the math, <laughs> which I'm not great at, is uh, 100 minutes of homework. Then students will then grade their own work and then uh, so they keep track of how many they missed the first time, and then they should go back a second time and look at the questions that they missed the first time and redo the questions that they missed the first time. And that way we can get a sense of which questions they missed because there was just a dumb mistake and which questions they missed because they fundamentally didn't understand the question. The students at the levels that we're mm -hmm. choosing for this, this isn't too onerous because usually students don't miss more than uh, somewhere between three and six questions. So the redoing is not too time intensive. And uh, this also speeds up time in class and we can focus only on the issues that the students really have rather than going through every single question, even the easy ones. And it keeps things mm -hmm. moving and keeps students motivated. When we have all the information from the students, we're going to collect to see which tests students have already done. If students haven't done a lot of tests already, maybe they've only done one or two or three practice tests, then there will be plenty of materials that students will not need to buy. But if we've got a number of students who have already kind of exhausted the publicly released tests, then we'll need to do some practice tests from Princeton Review, in which case students will need to buy the Princeton Review book. It, it is just going to depend on the number of tests that have already been done by the students who sign up. We'll, we'll determine that at that point. Usually there's enough tests for the full uh, slate so that students won't need to buy an entire book, but we'll, um, we'll, we'll know that when everybody's signed up. The history and literature passages are more challenging for students because they involve syntax and grammar and phrasing and styles that are usually quite old. And some of them are even older than the 19th century. Some of them are as, uh, in the 1780s and 1790s, depending on the history passage. 
Some literature passages are from the 19th century. And there are a number of curriculums in high schools that don't really focus on that kind of literature anymore, especially with international schools because of the difficulty level there and uh, with students who don't have English as a first language. And so students need to just be familiar. Uh, and so in the class, we will spend some time becoming familiar with the syntax and grammar and the style there. Um, that's one method that we use. But another method that we use to help students improve their comprehension of these kinds of writings is through, I have a system for analyzing argumentation and main ideas from passages that are relevant, especially, it was designed especially around the SAT. So students will learn how to quickly and effectively isolate important parts of passages so that they can better grasp the main ideas and the important points within paragraphs and passages as a whole. In my experience, the main issue that students have is confidence. They're not familiar with something. Um, they haven't had a lot of experience with it. And so the biggest issue is not necessarily that they lack understanding or they lack ability, but rather that they lack confidence so that when they understand something, they actually that even if they understand something, they think they don't understand something. They think it's too difficult or they're missing something. And that's usually the largest barrier to success. And so trying to improve student confidence is uh, job number one. The most effective strategy that I've found for SAT reading is very simple, but it's one that not everybody is aware of. And it may not be the most intuitive, which is that students should not answer questions. They should not actually look at the answer choices until they've done some work trying to answer it on their own. So it's it's always, I, I always say, like, try to answer the question to the best of your ability before looking at the answer choices. Do as much work as possible before looking at answer choices. This can seem counterintuitive to some, and it's definitely not what a lot of students necessarily do. But in my experience and research and time testing, Students should not look at answer choices until they've done absolutely everything they can because the questions are designed for them to make them fail, and it can create unnecessary confusion that you can avoid by not looking at them. And in terms of the writing, the writing section is a little bit strategy resistant because half of the questions are having to do with grammar rules that students need to know, and the other half are writing, uh, editing questions uh, for placement of sentences and uh, author choice and things like that. Um, so there isn't a ton of strategy necessarily. But one thing I have found is that many students do not read the passage in the writing section. And that's a big mistake that I try to correct with students and find that that usually makes a huge difference in improving writing score. For vocabulary, the SAT is much less of a vocabulary heavy test than it used to be. And students can bolster their vocabulary by uh, doing reading, especially the kind of passages that are present, like the 19th century passages and the history passages. But in addition, if vocabulary is a problem for students, I do have texts that students can use, uh, a book that I wrote uh, for the previous iterations of the SAT before they changed it in 2015 that is still effective as a method for picking up soft spots for students. But by and large, I find that vocabulary study is not the most useful use of time for students, it, that test practice is usually the best, but I do have options for students that need to study vocabulary. Mm -hmm.